Hey, good afternoon. It's Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics. Uh, back to tell you about uh, the new little product we have uh, for as a suspension upgrade for the 2018 Honda Goldwing. This is going to be the super duper ultra low budget upgrade for folks who just simply will never consider buying aftermarket shock absorbers uh, for their bikes. So <clears throat> there is a way if you have uh, tour model motorcycles only to uh, decouple the electronic damping adjustment from the motorcycle. And so we have a little kit to help do that. Now, if you have a standard model Goldwing, one without a trunk, this does not apply to you. So this only applies to tour model motorcycles. Now, on uh, tour model motorcycles, uh, there's a mode selection switch. you'll be familiar with on your handlebar. This is something people are just completely unclear about and don't understand, all right? Just stay there for a second, Austin. <clears throat> there are two completely separate systems on Honda Goldwings, uh, the tour models. The system you control from the dashboard is that shows the four icons uh, with rider versus luggage that is rear spring preload pressure only. Rear spring preload. It's just sp sp uh, spring pressure. That's it. Totally separate system. We're not talking about that right now. We're not changing that in any way. We're not modifying that in any way. What we're talking about <coughs> is the function of suspension as it's coupled to the engine performance mode. Now, uh, from the first time I heard that they were going to alter suspension function in conjunction with engine mode, personally I thought that was a bad idea. So, and to let me explain why. So, what they've Honda's done is, um, and I've got detailed kind of videos showing the adjuster and how it works, the little damping adjusters. But when you push the mode button uh, in rain, it sets the spin the suspension extremely loose, as loose as it can be for this bike. Okay, when you go to the tour mode, it gets to, let's call it a medium setting. When you go to sport mode, it's the firmest setting available for this bike. And then when you go back to econ mode, it goes halfway back to that middle setting. When you go to rain, it comes back to the loosest setting. So there's actually only three damping settings even though there's four engine modes they've done that with a motor that is all the way down halfway out all the way out halfway back all the way in and it just repeats those those three steps all right now uh, I thought it was a bad idea to couple suspension adjustment to engine performance you get a different level of engine performance in in uh, and throttle response in each one of those modes so for me it makes no sense I want my bike to handle a certain way, and the way I want it to handle, um, I might want my engine performance to function differently. So, uh, as an example as to why that makes no sense to me, it would be literally the same as if uh, that mode selected the engine performance, suspension damping adjustment, the radio station style, and the windscreen setting. So. In other words, if I wanted to go touring, if I pushed tour mode, what if my windscreen went all the way up, my radio station went to country music, my suspension went to medium, and my engine performance was relatively neutral. And then if I went to sport mode, my windshield went all the way down, my radio station would only play heavy metal or hard rock music, my suspension gets firmer, and my throttle response gets really powerful. I might not want any of those things at the same time. I might want what I want, and it makes no sense. I can move my windshield where I want it to, when I want it to. I can select any radio station I want to, when I want to. I can select an engine performance mode, but unfortunately, they're changing the way the suspension works, even though I don't want it to. Now, so let me qualify this. As I pointed out before, in my opinion, this bike is extremely undersprung and extremely underdamped. Now, when you move this mode, 
It makes no effect on the springs whatsoever. None at all. And I want to be very clear about that. Let me show you. Um, these are the shocks out of the bike. I've showed these in other videos. You can check out my YouTube channel. There's a little electric motor in each shock. If this were a normal shock and you wanted to change rebound damping, you would come with a, there'd be a screw and you would turn it with a screwdriver. This is just an outrageously expensive screwdriver, uh, uh, screw for you to use to adjust your suspension. So instead of leaving it to where the, the user could just poke a screwdriver in and turn a screw separately from engine performance, Honda has linked it with this crazy expensive, overly engineered, super complicated um, system. Now, uh, <clears throat> these shocks, as I've stated, are undersprung and, and underdamped. So, uh, I've always said I wanted to decouple them, so we came up with a way to do that. Uh, and in those three modes, if in my opinion, 10 is the correct amount of damping, um, I'm going to say that in the rain mode, it, the bike has two. In the tour mode, it has three. And in the sport mode, it has four units of damping. We're just I'm using this as a rule of thumb. So four out of 10. So between two, three, and four, that's the change this bike is capable of making. Now, most people complain that the, the again, the throttle response is too abrupt and too shocking um, in the sport mode, and it's almost unusable. Um, that's because the suspension doesn't function with enough damping um, to control the chassis of the bike. So the motor upsets the bike because the chassis has, no, has little to no control, not, not nearly enough control. So <clears throat> what you can do to trick your bike for a very cheap amount of money is uh, decouple the suspension while it's set in the sport mode. The way these motors work is um, when they move they will, and you unplug them from the system, um, the, uh, they will stay where they were last placed. So if you put your bike um, into, I'll show you what to work, how you do it. Uh, you put your bike with it running, put it into sport mode, just can be idling, you know, and you don't have to go anywhere. Just turn it to sport mode. Let them, when the sport mode flashes and stops and is say solid in sport mode, the bike's in sport mode, then you're gonna turn the bike off. And what we have is a set of block off plugs to um, decouple the suspension so that you can effectively leave the shock absorbers in the mode where you'll have um, the most damping available for this motorcycle in stock trim. This is the cheapest possible fix you can do. Our kit's going to be $29.95 to help do this. So, it's uh, what we have is um, uh, weatherproof blind plugs. So you can disconnect the shock absorbers, cap the shock wiring harness, and cap the factory wiring harness, and um, then that will uh, make make the bike stay in so shocks stay in the firmest setting. But it will be a reversible thing if some other person who bought the bike as the second owner wanted to undo that. So, um, let me show you where the couplers are. We'll start with the rear one right here real quick. Um, it's quite simply up in the middle of the bike here. You can, I'm going to see this light shining in there. All of the bikes have a ton of space right here. And in fact, there's even some just decorative covers. This is a six speed. Uh, DCT has something similar right here. Um, these are, I'm just taking this cover loose because then you can kind of look in there a little bit. DCT, if I recall, has more space, but so you can kind of see the light glowing in there. And uh, where I'm gonna put my hand, see if you can see my fingers in there. I'm gonna actually put my hand right on the connector. So um, it's right here. Uh, let me see if we can't slide the slide the look slide the camera under here. I don't know if I'm gonna have this on it's right. Um, so I can't see what I'm seeing on the camera. Hopefully we get some light. Um, 
up there you'll see one connector with nothing coming out the bottom of it um, more or less right here is the connector um, sorry about this Oops. Uh, it's it's easy to find because the wire coming from the shock is quite obvious it's shiny black it's very thick and hard and you'll you'll see the wire going backwards towards the shock so uh, the factory harness uh, this is one um, where the connector um, that will supply will snap to the frame and then the factory wiring harness snaps to it this is one of the ones that Honda did in a backwards order whereas when you undo the factory wiring harness it's loose but the shock is still stuck to the bike um, the release tab for the shock is oriented forward on the bike so if you if you trace your hand up the wire you'll feel this tab here you can see that tab you'll trace your hand up the wire this always faces forward on the bike you can pull this and it will release from the bike um, you can zip tie that just to the chassis or anywhere you want it's convenient um, weatherproof blind plug will snap in place now this shock will still be good and can be recoupled at any time weatherproof blind plug for the factory wiring harness same exact coupler you're going to slide this up snap it to the tab on the frame and then take the factory wiring harness and snap it back in so now the rear shock is decoupled and it's in sport mode for the front shock same same general concept applies we're going to decouple it this one is hard to reach um, in fact uh, it will be challenging is all I can say about that it helps if you don't have giant hands if you have giant hands you're gonna to have to find a find a friend with much smaller hands so on the left side of the bike way back, just behind the radiator I've got the light touching the coupler back here I'm gonna try and point with a screwdriver as well tip of the screwdriver is touching the touching the coupler it's as far back in as it can get all right but again this will be obvious to find because the wire comes from the bottom of the shock absorber it's very very easy to trace out and find so on this one it is uh, coupled in a way that makes sense so you will release the wire from the factory front shock in the back and when you do the harness stays connected stays connected to the frame and to the tab so that one's really nice and clean uh, you'll reach in with the appropriate block off uh, cap um, put the weatherproof block off cap in place push it until you hear the snap and the click um, on this shock um, you'll also see that the the wiring harness is the shock harness is tabbed to a metal bracket on the frame It's another easy way to help find it and then same thing. You're gonna take your block off plug slide it in snap it um, And that can easily be tucked in any other wire or if you want to if you want to take time or want to put an extra zip tie in there somewhere you can it will be easier if you take it forward and zip tie it just because uh, reaching back in there is quite difficult uh, if you uh, buy our shock absorber set, it's going to come with these uh, uh, block off plugs uh, to keep the uh, factory wiring harness protected. Um, so uh, that's our kit. It's going to, you know, we're calling it the, the Traction um, Electronic Damping Decoupling Kit and a Suspension Decoupling Kit. And uh, that's the way. So, and by the way, the trick. The trick will work. You can put the bike in any mode that you feel works best, but I, I can promise you putting the suspension in sport mode is by far the best. But uh, you can do the same process. You can put it in touring mode and decouple it. It's just any anytime you want to reverse it. Plug the motors back in, start the bike, select the mode you want, decouple the shock absorbers, put the caps on, and uh, the, the shocks will stay the dampers, the damping adjusters and the shocks will stay at that position on that time. So anyway, these will be available at uh, traction.com, www.traction.com, T-R-A-X-X-I-O-N. 
uh, $29.95, and, um, and we're going to ship them by a little postal packet to try and save, save you money on that as well. So a couple little products, don't forget, we have the steering bridge lock pin that helps you measure your tie rod free and in free play. That's $10. Uh, and uh, we've got a, a little, a nice stainless steel bolt set to replace the hardware here that we're selling for $5. It's a pair of bolts and a pair of washers uh, sized appropriately for the bike. To, um, so for people who to help facilitate people who are changing their front wheel and that kind of stuff. So anyway, there's a couple little products uh, just wanted to introduce to you. Talk to you soon.